Most of what scientists have known about the Mississippi alluvial aquifer has come from thousands of boreholes drilled at a cost of $300 million over decades. New systems being developed by the U.S. Geological Survey are providing much more information about the aquifer at far less cost. The USGS's Dr. J.R. Rigby discussed those in a presentation at this year's Virtual Arkansas Soil and Water Education Conference. One data set that we've invested in that we think is a long-term investment for the region is airborne electromagnetic surveys uh, to map the entire aquifer system from Missouri to Louisiana. This is the largest airborne electromagnetic effort for water resources mapping in the continental United States to date, uh, with a total planned uh, flight line distance of 50,000 line kilometers. This was flown in uh, basically three phases, beginning in February to March of 2018, uh, and culminating this year when in the spring we'll fly another 5,000 uh, line kilometers of resolve surveys and then follow that up with the final component of our regional survey. Uh, I think we're going to see that this data set is a game changer in the region in terms of the robustness for applications in all kinds of areas. Uh, we've recently submitted a manuscript on this data set and uh, within that we find applications as broad as from earthquake histories to the early geology of the region uh, to its intended purpose, which is better mapping of water resources flow pathways. This data set gives us uh, really three data sets in one uh, from the three instruments on board the aircraft. The first is radiometrics. Uh, this gives you the relative concentrations of uranium, thorium, and potassium in the upper 30 centimeters of the soil, or the upper one foot of the soil. Uh, this is really just giving us the uh, mineralogy of the soils at the surface, and it corresponds very closely to uh, existing soil surveys from uh, NRCS, for example. In the middle here, you see the, the electromagnetic resistivity. Uh, this is the primary data set, and it gives us a three-dimensional picture of the aquifer down to about 200 meters below the surface, or about 600 feet below the surface. And then on the far right, uh, the magnetic data uh, is measured by a magnetometer on board and is really responding to changes in the rock density uh, very deep below the surface. So this is on the order of kilometers below the surface and shows uh, some of the geometry of the basement rock in the region. What we use the Airborne for, as I mentioned, uh, it, there are a wide variety of applications. Um, one of them is mapping the base of the aquifer, and we've done some preliminary comparisons using the airborne data to compare with existing uh, bases of the aquifer derived from boreholes. Here in the left figure, you can see the borehole derived base of the aquifer uh, from a 2019 publication. In the center, you can see the base of the aquifer uh, using the airborne data. And to the eye, they don't look very different. But if you take a difference map, uh, just subtracting the elevation of the base of the aquifer between those two surfaces, you get the figure on the right where uh, the dark reds represent an elevation difference of uh, 20 meters or more, and the dark blues uh, represent uh, a positive difference of 20 meters or more. Uh, and throughout our aquifer, the average thickness is about 35 meters. So anywhere you see differences of on the order of 20 meters, we're over 50% different in the total sat potential saturated thickness of the aquifer between those two uh, estimates. So the airborne has the potential to revise our understanding of the geometry of the aquifer substantially.